Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central. We're coming to you with another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're going to talk about this cool thing called Data Safe. And uh, Data Safe, essentially what it does is it keeps all your data safe. Uh, the data that specifically would be in your browser as you're interacting with a web application. So I'm going to draw a little, uh, little scenario up here. Uh, let's say we have a client that wants to access your awesome web application, you know, which is over here and it's doing amazing things. So client to web application. And typically this, uh, you know, this, this client goes to access the web application. We're going to put a big IP, of course, right here in the middle. So we got a big IP doing lots of cool stuff. And this is where DataSafe is going to be enabled. Um, but in a, uh, in a standard you know, transaction or a standard connection that the client has with the web application, um, they're going to access this. And one of, the, one of the ways that we protect the client web application transaction is through TLS. Um, I would say SSL, but now it's all TLS stuff. Uh, TLS encryption. And so the, the data that travels from the browser to the web application and back is all protected you know, via... TLS, which is great and all, but what we want to what we want to do here with DataSafe specifically is target the client or the browser uh, itself. And the reason we want to target that is sometimes you have uh, what's called like man in the browser attackers, or you'll have like key loggers or things like that, where before you ever even send a request from the client to the web application. You may have some attacker bad guy in here in the client doing nefarious things uh, like stealing your credentials as you type them in before you even hit you know, go or log in or that kind of thing before that post data even heads to the web application. Um, all right, so here's how the, here's how the data safe uh, um, you know, module or feature works uh, on the big IP. Uh, let's say that on the web application, you have you know, the, the web page that you're looking to access uh, has a uh, username and password field. So let's say uh, so. Let's say that there's a. I'm going to say user username and password. All right. And whenever you have that page that is built out, it's built out via this HTML code, just like any standard web page would be built out. Uh, and let's say in that. Let's say in that uh, in that HTML code, uh, I'm just going to kind of put it down here. You've got you know HTML. Um, maybe you've got you know some kind of div uh, you know that you're that you're looking at. Um, maybe you have an input uh, an input field, and the name of that input field name equals uh, username. All right, username. And then maybe down here you have another you know input field where the name equals password. All right. And this is very, very simple. Of course, this could all, you know, this, this gets a lot more complex with the actual HTML code. You can all, when you're in the browser, by the way, you can hit like inspect element, for example, and you can see all of this different stuff, you know, and see how the page that you're looking at is actually built out. Uh, but let's say for the purposes of this example, you have a couple of inputs uh, named username and password. Well, if you're an attacker bad guy and you can look at that on the page itself, and you have found your way as an attacker into the client's browser, then you can say, hey, I'm going to start to target this, uh, this parameter, this input name that says username and, and this one that says password. So I'm going to write a little script or I'm going, to, I'm going to look at a way to target those specific input names. So whenever the user goes to put in a value for this thing called username, and they put in a value for this thing called password, then I'm going to keystroke log or steal those specific uh, you know, data inputs. And then of course at that point now I have their username and their password and then I can just log in on behalf of them and, uh, and then do bad things. All right, so whether it's a keystroke logger um, that, you know, that grabs that, or there's a thing called a post grab, which the post would be the, um, you know, the HTTP post that, that would be sent from the client to the web application. Uh, you can grab the post data, which would have this stuff in there as well, and it would even possibly even have the, the value of the username, the value of the password. Um, 
There's also things that you can do, if, again, if you're in the browser, that, uh, that you can do uh, like a, a web inject is what I'll call it. And that's where you could manipulate the HTML so that whenever the client's uh, browser shows the web page that comes, that's supposed to come back, then maybe, maybe you add a little input name uh, to this. Uh, and I'll just, I'll just put it down here. So, you know, input uh, name equals, uh, let's say, social security number or, you know, bank account number or whatever it is. And then you can actually add that to the page and that tricks the user into thinking, oh, well, maybe my web application has added the fact that I need to add my social security number now. So then they input that as well. So anyway, you can see, the, you can see how an attacker could start to manipulate some of, the, some of the field names and some of the field values to gain access to, uh, to, to, you know, to the web application on your behalf. Okay, what you can do with DataSafe now specifically, uh, and again, DataSafe is targeted at the, at the client, the web browser, um, and it's, uh, the, the idea of DataSafe is that the big IP with DataSafe enabled is going to interact with the client specifically, and it's going to be able to manipulate things in the browser before they're ever even sent to the web application. Uh, and again, I'll just uh, note again that the, once it leaves the browser and heads to the web application, it's protected typically uh, via the TLS encryption, uh, but while it's on the client, you want it to be protected there as well. All right, so what you can do with DataSafe is you can go in, create a profile, and then you can target certain URLs. And there's a lot of different things you can do, but I'm going to kind of go through this one specific example. Um, you can target, in this case, a specific URL. So I'm going to say a URL that we want to target would equal, let's say that the name of the URL for this specific interaction that, you, that you're looking at right here is, you know, the name of the web application, www.example.com. And then it's, uh, let's say, slash login, all right? So in DataSafe, you can select that I want to protect the URL that is at the position or at the location slash login. And then from there, <clears throat> I can start to uh, identify parameters. So I'm going to say parameters. And on that page, on that login page, I know, because I'm the web app developer, right? Um, and I know what's supposed to be on that page. There are a couple of parameters. One is called username, all right, username, and one is called password, all right? And of course, you can, you can manipulate this or, or you can change or add or whatever, you know, whatever parameters you want to protect specifically, all right? So what we have set, what we would have set here in DataSafe is we're going to target the URL uh, slash logon or login, and we're going to specifically target parameters called username and password. All right. On username and password, there's a few different, or on any parameter, frankly, that you that you select, there's a couple of different options that you can do. You can say uh, encrypt, encrypt. Uh, another one is substitute, and I'm just going to kind of write them here, substitute. And then the last one is obfuscate, obfuscate. All right. And so essentially, what you can, what you have the ability to do now is as the big IP directly interacts with the client's uh, browser, then you can say for these specific parameters at this specific URL, I want to encrypt uh, the values for those parameters. Um, and so at lit literally as the, as the client is typing in the value for the username and password on that web page, uh, the values themselves are being encrypted so that if you have a keystroke logger, for example, then the keystroke logger is going to be capturing encrypted uh, data or encrypted characters, and they're gonna, they're gonna have no idea what the value of that is because it's encrypted. Um, another thing you can do is substitute so that um, instead of uh, the value that you are typing in, it's gonna actually put different characters in, uh, in the field. So if you were to do that inspect element thing again uh, and try to you know, keystroke log or post grab, then there's going to be completely different characters than what you actually typed in. Um, Obfuscate is, uh, is going to completely just jumble everything up so that like the name of the parameter is no longer username, but it's this, you know, this mess of characters that, uh, that a, an attacker wouldn't even know if you're going to go back here and say, hey, there's this name called username, this other input name called password. At this point, if you, obf if you obfuscate it all, it won't even know what to even look at to try to steal from. 
Alrighty. Another thing you can do is say add add decoy inputs. And what this does is you remember how remember how in the attacker bad guy thing they could add an input name to try to trick you into putting even more information. What the big IP can do is kind of turn the tables a little bit on them. And as they look at the HTML that builds out this page and they're going to try to target certain parameters or certain input names, the big IP will actually add these decoy inputs so that the so that if it's obfuscated and encrypted and all that stuff, the attacker will have no idea which input name or what parameter to even look at to try to steal from. <clears throat> so it kind of totally confuses them. Um, another thing that I'll mention quickly is let's say that the attacker um, steals uh, the actual uh, you know, data for your username and your password that you're trying to send to the web application to log in. If the big IP knows that, it's, that it is supposed to be encrypted and let's say substituted and obfuscated and all that stuff, if the, if the attacker grabs uh, you know, that post data before it goes in and it has no idea of, you know, again, which, uh, which parameter or input to look at, but it just says, hey, I've, maybe I've got the credentials from a credential stuffing you know, attack type thing, and I'm just going to go ahead and input what I know is the proper username and password, um, and it tries to send that into the web application, the big IP can actually block that even though it's the actual username and password that, that would be uh, allowed to gain access because the big IP knows that it is, should be looking for an encrypted, substituted, and obfuscated input from that specific client. And so this attacker bad guy that's got your credentials still can't get in because it would need to put in the properly obfuscated, substituted, and encrypted input in order for the big IP to, uh, to accept that. And then, of course, the big IP will decrypt and will do all the proper translation on this before it sends it back to the web application. So the web application still gets the, you know, the proper input. Um, all right, so again, data safe. Uh, you know, while, while we can protect uh, data, you know, in, in, in transit or data, you know, moving across the wire with this TLS encryption, uh, it's still important to protect the client level browser. And that's what DataSafe is all about. So it does some really cool things with, between the, you know, with the interaction between the big IP and the client browser that keeps all of your data safe. Uh, you don't have to install anything uh, on the client. You don't have to do anything different. You just have to enable this on the big IP and then your clients are going to be automatically protected with this. So, uh, so I hope you've learned a couple things about DataSafe, the power of it. Uh, and uh, so thanks for uh, hanging in there and watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. Hey, if you like this thing, you can click right here on the DC ball and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.